Hello, good afternoon. It's Adil Fazal here, market analyst at CFDs.com, bringing your review European markets end of day, Thursday, the 7th of April 2016. Be sure to download the latest app by, from, uh, via tradesignaler.com, uh, released by CFDs.com on uh, the uh, Google Play and the App Store. And you can certainly catch my analysis that's streamed on there, along with others, uh, with regards to the markets, FX, commodities, bonds, and uh, equities certainly visit www.tradesignaler.com okay european markets uh, they finished certainly in the negative along with the, the u.s markets currently trading in the red as well and mainly led by the strength in the yen okay usd jpy such is currently uh, tumbling the yen is obviously rallying and as we all know the yen along with chf and the dollar are all safe haven currencies so whenever markets or uh, in traders embrace the yen is generally considered risk on and we all know with regards to the inverse trade of the Nikkei <clears throat> as you can see here the, the Nikkei uh, certainly pausing uh, coming into potential uh, support uh, although having said that the uh, the Nikkei certainly has dropped uh, even uh, some more substantially it's currently trading at the 15,000 well, hit a pivot low 15,300 we all know the gap fill level is at 15,000, so, uh, so certainly bear that in mind. But having said that, the uh, the Nikkei certainly is under immense pressure, along with the uh, the Shanghai index, because the Shanghai was certainly down today as well. As you can see here, the Shanghai is certainly facing resistance and certainly a negative day in the Shanghai as well. If I just take the Fibonacci uh, the trend line from the pivot low here, connect it across, and uh, we certainly... Uh, are coming into potential support on this diagonal trend line but for now that unfilled gap above certainly remains a potential target oil prices along with copper certainly both coming under immense resi immense uh, uh, weakness <clears throat> but a lot of that certainly has been priced into a large extent okay so the FTSE finishing down 0.4 percent the uh, uh, European indices down almost a percentage point the German DAX and the uh, euro stocks uh, again, the story is all about the USD JPY, folks. So please do keep an eye on the USD JPY. Uh, the um, Abenomics or Corodonomics, call it what you want, certainly seems to have failed. Uh, if I just bring up the yen, you can see here it certainly is uh, uh, spiking higher today. It is into that resistance zone. Okay, now if I go back on a weekly chart, uh, you're going back all the way from the uh, sort of uh, inception of 2015. You can see that the yen certainly is at a, a, a two-year high. So certainly um, a failure of uh, the QE um, um, concept uh, certainly is uh, facing resistance. Okay, so that's certainly something to consider in terms of the uh, remainder of the U.S. session. And the U.S. session I'll uh, discuss in a separate video. It certainly seems to have stabilized, though. So, uh, and I am actually long the euro stocks. So just to make you aware, folks, I'm actually long... Euro stocks from 28, uh, 2875. Okay, uh, stop is at 2845, looking for three uh, 2900 plus. So I'm certainly long the euro stocks uh, now. Certainly, I've closed my shorts on the uh, forex and uh, indices as well. I had a short on the FTSE today, a short on the Aussie today as well. My swing trading. Certainly, I've closed them, and I'm actually swing long the uh, euro stocks as well. Okay, so yen certainly is coming into resistance. So again. It's whether or not the BOJ can intervene uh, and whether or not the dollar can certainly catch a bid for the USD JPY trade to start to move. Okay, in terms of the USD JPY, let's bring up the chart. Okay, if I just go to a weekly chart, you can see on the weekly chart basis your uh, HS target on the USD JPY trade is 106. We hit a pivot low of 107.6, so we're almost there. Almost there. So the pivot high was 1, 1, well, 1, 2, 5. Let's just do this correctly. Okay, let's get this adjusted right. So, configure. So the pivot high exactly was one two well one two six. Your neckline was more or less at one one five or one one six. So you are looking at one oh six on the downside. So again, certainly an impressive sell off to say the least. Okay, in the daily chart of the USD JPY at the moment, the only base area of potential support is down at the one oh five. Uh, previous support equals resistance in that region as well. We really are in no man's land. We really are in no man's land. Now the uh, the onus will be on the uh, the uh, BOJ whether or not they can potentially intervene here. Uh, you do have a bottoming tail doji here at 107.6. Certainly looks very bearish in terms of uh, the USD JPY. 
certainly no argument here for a reversal at all. It's very hard to certainly argue uh, from uh, from that perspective. Although you do have a, 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 a expanding, falling, contracting wedge. So again, certainly a potential for a rally. But from a, from the dollar's perspective, I mean, it's very hard. Uh, let's just go to the US dollar first of all. USDJPY certainly is in no man's land. Certainly seems to be in free fall. The US dollar futures, let's have a look. Okay, so... Certainly an argument to be made in the daily chart of the US dollar index, given the fact that we've got a bottoming tail there, as you can see, into horizontal support. On the weekly chart, the dollar index certainly is into support as well. Uh, on the four-hour chart, let's just bring that up for you. Again, holding support. We've got a bottoming tail there, so bear that in mind. Although, having said that, you do have this classical bear flag formation, which obviously could send the USDJPY even further, and that could obviously trigger off another bout of risk aversion. So, again... Remain open-minded, okay. Uh, again, we do need the dollar index to rally here because we need the euro lower and we need the USD JPY higher. So, uh, all eyes on the USD uh, US dollar trade, okay. So, again, keep an eye on that in terms of the uh, next move. Now, looking at a 60-minute chart, there is a case to be made here for a potential inverted head and shoulders formation. A lot of the support zones have actually got broken. Uh, certainly remain vulnerable here now. So, looking at your left shoulder... Here, okay, going back down, and certainly a, a potential for inverted head and shoulders formation. So, see how that pans out, okay? For now, uh, that pivot low certainly has held, and we're looking at a higher low for now and looking to test the highs. And that obviously would send the euro lower, USD JPY trade higher, etc. etc. Okay, so certainly uh, keep that in mind. Daily chart, bottoming tail, helping the USD JPY trade. And that's one of the reasons why I'm actually long the euro stocks, folks. The dollar, it certainly seems to have made a bottom, which in turn helps the euro USD. So if I go to the euro USD uh, chart, if I just go to the daily chart, first of all, again, we're in that zone. You can see this horizontal resistance certainly has held a pivot high, 114.6, certainly has held, and you're looking for a potential reversal. Going over to the four hour chart of the euro USD, you can clearly see here now we're making a HS formation, folks. Okay, so again, uh, this is a good trade. Uh, I may well take this in the swing uh, trading service, which is a fundamental analysis service. All those you can, you can join for free. Just email me, I'll add you onto there. And you can clearly see that we are making this HNS formation on the four hour chart. All eyes on the Euro USD HNS top, which again is confirmed by the dollar index. And again, USD JPY potential intervention in the works. Okay, so again, uh, keep an eye out for that. If we see strength in the USD JPY, USD JPY bouncing off that pivot low, then you will see uh, uh, the the USD JPY moving higher, dollar moving higher, sending the Euro USD lower, and this HNS formation certainly go comes into play. Okay, so everything certainly seems to be falling in motion from my perspective. Okay, so again, this is zone here at the one one three point four is very very important because it equals previous resistance equals support. And is the HNS neckline as well. So we need a break of 113.4 in order to uh, help the uh, the bears uh, have a feast and send the euro lower and obviously send the equity market higher. Uh, the FTSE, the Nasdaq is currently uh, recapturing the 4500 level. So again, that's an interesting point to observe. Okay, right. Uh, so what have I concluded here from a fundamental market perspective? The euro is on the verge of moving lower, which again helps the equity market. Uh, now, we do need to cross-reference that with the chart of the euro bond. Now, the bond I did explain to you last time that it is on the verge of a breakout, and you can clearly see that we are see, witnessing that in the daily chart. So, a breakout in the bond, as we all know, bonds higher, uh, move in tandem with equities, because the yields move lower. The yields move lower, sends the euro lower, and that's exactly what occurs. Now, we had a comment from Mr. Priyat, if I'm correct, ECB's Priyat. Uh, let's just have a look. Okay, so... Um, ECB uh, Smets says ECB has tools to respond if needed. ECB Smets ECB could cut rates further, expand unconventional monetary policy. So again, that's certainly negative for the euro. Obviously, that helps the bonds to move higher, sends the yields lower on the expectations of obviously further rate cuts. So just about oh, just verbal uh, obviously threat of uh, of of a weaker rates, uh, or weaker interest rates. And bonds go higher, euro obviously goes lower, and that sends the equity markets higher. Okay, and that's the uh, the actual thought process here. Okay, in terms of other fundamental news flow, uh, in terms of other fundamental news flow, French data, French imports certainly higher, uh, French exports more or less in line, although the trade balance was certainly weaker. 
uh, industrial output from the uh, from Spain certainly weaker uh, house prices in the UK stronger ECB's preamp speech obviously we know is dovish uh, yeah, 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 yeah. ECB monetary policy Mr Draghi was more or less neutral uh, you know, so jobless claims out of the US more or less in line and uh, all eyes on Miss Yellen and Miss Yellen may well not sound as, as, as dovish as everybody expected but again if it is dovish it helps the US markets and that in turn will help European markets although all eyes on the euro USD okay but having said that with regards to talk about the uh, uh, unconventional monetary policy and obviously uh, talk of further rate cuts that should be uh, your, your equity market supported <clears throat> Okay, back to the Euro, Euro, Euro stocks now. Okay, so Euro stocks certainly has had this uh, uh, an impressive sell-off, certainly moving lower. Okay, uh, we are still holding that uh, gap level, so watch out for that gap zone. Okay, that gap level certainly is holding on the daily chart. If we go over to the 60-minute chart, you can see that we've got this falling, uh, contracting wedge type pattern. Okay, we have put in a potential bottoming tail as well uh, going into the close. So again, that's interesting. Uh, so certainly signaling a potential reversal. 10 minute chart the euro stocks again a bottoming tail and we are looking to potentially bounce uh, in terms of support and resistance let's just look at this zone you have an unfilled gap above at 2960 and all eyes will be on that target so certainly keeping an eye on that uh, zone there at uh, 2965 should i say okay so 2965 zone certainly needs to be watched very very carefully and looking to potentially move in that direction okay so let's just look at this zone here now Okay, this is interesting. Okay, watching out. Uh, other than that, I can't see anything moving in our favor. Okay, that certainly seems to be the zone for now. Okay, right. So the uh, Euro stocks 2965 above. Watch out for that zone, and you do have unfilled gap at 3005. Now let's cross reference that uh, um, obviously chart with other European indices. So if I look at the Europe uh, S and P Europe 350 daily. Uh, now, again, with regards to Mr. ECB Samir Dovish uh, rhetoric, that obviously helps the European indices. Now, the daily chart at the moment really is in no man's land on the daily chart, so we can't really find any support other than the fact that you have support down here, and then you have an unfilled gap below. So, again, let me just draw this gap in, and they are the two potential support zones for the uh, S&P uh, Europe 350. Let's go to a 60-minute chart, see if we can locate something, so you can certainly see spot something straight away. You've got a bottoming tail and horizontal support holding, okay, on the 60-minute chart. We failed to make lower lows, and therefore you are looking for a potential bounce. And that's, that's one of the reasons why, as you know, I'm long the uh, European indices, okay? So I'm looking for a move higher on European indices, okay? 10-minute chart, uh, if I go to the 10-minute chart, Euro stocks, you can see that we failed to make lower low. Uh, the base has certainly held, okay? And we are looking for a potential thrust higher. So again, they are the resistance zones above, and that's what we're looking for. But for now, as, as you can see here, we, we, a base has been built and therefore European stocks are moving higher. OK, now uh, the other indices I generally tend to look at is a Euro stock 600. So if I go to the stock 600 on a weekly chart basis, uh, there is an, a case, a very, very strong case on your weekly chart basis that you're looking at an inverted head and shoulders formation. Given the fact that the Euro USD has made a top, US dollar has made a bottom, Euro USD is on the verge of moving low on the HS formation, which I've explained. Bonds are going to new highs, and therefore that will trigger the inverted head and shoulders formation. Left shoulder, head, as we've all seen, consolidating here, and off we go to the races in the back of QE. Okay, so unconventional monetary policy, they were the words of Mr. Priyat today, and you are looking for a thrust tire on European indices in the back of QE. Okay. Can I explain it any, any further? Okay, again, I am certainly bullish European stocks at this juncture. Daily chart, again, you are in no man's land. You do have this unfilled gap here that we certainly have closed, okay, on the daily chart, although you do have an unfilled gap further below. And you can see there's a classical inverted head and shoulders. There's your left shoulder. I've already shown you the weekly chart, and you're just basically making your right shoulder as we speak. Using your Fibonacci retracement tool, take the pivot low, take it to the pivot high, and you are into that 50% ideal scenario to go along okay so from my perspective given the fact that bonds are on the verge of a breakout euro usd is topping out european stocks are a screaming buy okay so that's my setup folks this is what i do in the live analysis service for so those of you that want this uh, day in day out just join me on my live analysis service i charge 50 pound a month for that and you can certainly uh, join me and gain access to my trades 
Uh, this week I am currently 350 points for the week on my uh, live analysis service. Uh, on the fundamental analysis, 280 odd points and 630 odd points for the uh, week in total on the FAS and the uh, LAS. So very, very impressive week this week. OK, having said that, I mean, it's not all uh, glory, folks. Last week I was actually negative on the live analysis service. I was minus 60 points. So it swings in roundabouts. That's trading, folks. But as long as you control your risk and you manage your losses, then everything is good. OK, um, I'm not going to give you <laughs> a lengthy lecture on uh, on, um, on risk management, money management, that's something that you should all certainly learn and uh, endeavor to uh, implement in your trading uh, day to day. Okay, for now, uh, my job is to do, analyze the markets, give you the potential setups and see exactly where these European markets stand. I've explained to you from the currency market perspective, I've explained to you from the equity market perspective and even the bond market as well. I haven't even touched upon the uh, commodities as Mr. J. Murphy's work uh, states. Uh, based on intermarket analysis that's a lengthy lengthy uh, topic altogether okay so summation here european indices on the verge of a uh, move higher okay uh, let's just look at the german dax as well you can clearly see in the german dax you've put in a bottoming tail looking to potentially bounce okay on the german dax uh from my perspective so uh you can certainly see that beautiful bottoming tail that was put in intraday and then you had strong volume thereafter looking for a potential thrust higher okay so certainly looking for a move higher on the german dax given the fact that we've held e9 500 gap fill support uh certainly again uh we we retested that we hit a pivot low of 9480 uh the gap has closed and now we are looking to potentially thrust higher okay the french cac let's just look at the french cac as well again daily chart gap fill holding 60 minute chart no lower low, bottoming tail, 10 minute chart, again, good volume, bottoming tail, looking for a thrust time. Okay, so European stocks certainly bullish. Now let's look at the FTSE 100. The FTSE 100, let's go to the daily chart first of all. Daily chart perspective, we're just consolidating here. Uh, certainly, uh, given the fact that we had a bullish engulfing candle, consolidation, bullish engulfing candle, consolidation, certainly we're trading sideways here. Given the fact that we do have Brexit concerns, I can't get overtly bullish on the FTSE itself. But having said that, it hasn't retested those lows at 6.070, which is very impressive. And that's mainly due to the price of oil. OK, so I'm not going to elaborate on uh, on that for now. But for the FTSE, you can clearly see uh, very, very impressive. And again, it also finished with the bombing tail as well. So we failed to uh, test the lows here, uh, even failed to test the lows there and, and there and there. OK. So interesting scenario with regards to the FTSE 100. Again, a bottoming tail was registered, folks. Bear that in mind. A bottoming tail was registered, and you are looking for a potential thrust tire on the FTSE 100 from my perspective. Now, let's just bring on the chart of oil because, as we all know, oil prices certainly make a very, very important impact. Given the fact that there's been no overtly bearish news with regards to oil, given the fact that oil inventories data, as we all know, certainly has come in on the... Uh, the weaker side, which again helps the price of oil. And all I can see at the moment, really, in the four hour chart is a potential for a H inverted head and shoulders, given the fact that we haven't tested the lows and we're looking for a higher low and looking for a potential continuation of this rally uh, that we've witnessed. So, uh, again, interesting scenario. Okay, 60 minute chart of oil, you are now coming into support. So, again, that supports the FTSE 100 rally. So, therefore, be careful not to become overtly bearish, given though we are aware with regards to the yen. There are concerns, but uh, again, the dollar index is into support, which should in turn help the USDJBY. And there is the threat of potential intervention as well. So certainly take that into consideration, OK, uh, in terms of the uh, the actual market. So equity is certainly in support, looking to potentially move higher. OK, that's certainly my understanding. Uh, and also commodities. OK, uh, chart of copper, folks. Copper, as we know today, is certainly very weak. Uh, and that certainly is a cause for concern. Let's just quickly go to the four hour chart, see if we can uh, certainly identify a support zone. Yes, we can. Uh, you certainly have support in this zone here and this zone here and this zone here. So certainly a support zone uh, or a support area. OK, in terms of copper and that in, it, in it of itself should help the uh, the actual copper from preventing the copper from dropping any further. So certainly into support and that obviously helps the uh, trade. So helps my euro stocks long trade, helps the uh, the buyers being bullish. OK. So certainly take that into consideration as well. Now, you can clearly see that you had this H&S formation on copper, uh, certainly an exhaustion pattern. So left shoulder, head, obviously right shoulder, we flush lower. If you take the pivot high, and this is interesting as well. So if you take the pivot high at uh, uh, 
yeah, what? 2.32 minus the head, which is a neckline. 2.2 uh, .2 should equal 2.32, uh, 2.20. You're looking at knocking off a point, so uh, 2.1. So you're looking at, let's just have a look here, 2.3. So you're looking at 2. Zero 0.8 ideally and that's exactly where we are okay so you clearly see that we have uh, hit our HNS target now looking for a potential short squeeze so again for copper it's bullish and therefore you're looking for a move higher and I am I will be potentially looking for uh, Aussie and Kiwi to certainly strengthen here as well on the back of commodities okay certainly take that into consideration as well now let's just bring up the charts of European banks this is something that I've been looking at here we go okay so in terms of the banking sector as well this is European banking sector 10 minute chart is into support uh, this is the euro stock 600 banks again 60 minute chart lower channel support and the daily chart as well now coming into potential support as well coming into that potential double bottom scenario okay so certainly support there as well let's have a look at the uh, oil and gas sector Euro European uh, sector oil and gas Bottoming tail there on the 10 minute chart, saying looking to potentially bounce. 60 minute chart, diagonal trend line, looking to bounce, no lower lows. And the daily chart as well uh, certainly has come into potential gap fill support, as you can see here. Okay, so the banking sector and the uh, the actual um, oil and gas sector certainly both into support, and therefore, hence the reason why I'm long euro stocks and looking for a move higher. I think that's a comprehensive review. Uh, I'm not going to make this video any longer. I can continue, continue to talk and look at other aspects uh, and go into depth, but that's something that I do in the mentoring and teach my subscribers on a daily basis via the live analysis service. Be sure to visit cfds.com for your trading needs. Okay, folks, specialists in spread betting and CFD brokerage earn up to 2,500 with their 25% cash bonus offer. Terms and conditions apply. On that note, goodbye.